I'm doing, Miss Tanya Kavanya. I mean, clean the whole station. Magic. I don't use magic for cleaning. It doesn't reach these hard to get at places. What do you use instead? A toothbrush for small spots, rags for windows, different tools for different jobs. Of course, the best tool is elbow grease, it helps to give that splendid shine. That reminds me, it's time to clean that bike of mine. Oh, I still vote for magic. Otherwise, I'll need a new cloth. I don't think it's funny. I love money. Yeah, I always liked that tune. It's always been one of my favorite songs. Hey, look at this place. What a mess. Yes, that's why we're cleaning up, Schemer. And besides, I think this station is always beautiful, especially when people have been using it. Hey, who cares about the station, huh? I mean, look at this. Uh, buckets, rags, mops. Uh, you call this place Shining Time Station? <laughs> there is nothing shining about it. Yuck. The people who come to ride the trains care about this station. So do the people who get off here. Matt, Tanya. You're a couple of fine youngsters, but uh, do me a favor, okay? You do your little uh, cleanup job, but don't kid yourselves. The only reason anybody comes here is for the arcade. Oh, come on, Schemer. You can't really believe that. Oh, sure, Miss Stacy Jones. Keep on laughing. How many customers did you have today? Oh, well, let's see. This morning we had two on the 8 o'clock local, and then we had five on the 915 to Chubby Corners. And the last train in, there must have been at least 10 passengers. Why, that makes 17. 17. <laughs> I could double that to 35 like that. <laughs> Did I hear anybody say how? How? Advertising. We are not adequately pushing the one decent attraction we have here. Entertainment. No. What about the trains? Trains. The history. I mean, look at this stuff over here. We got the cows as passengers on trains. What they use for money? Milk? Come oh, on, look at this over here. Fifteen years on the Erie Canal? Who needs it? Wagons from the Wild West? Hey, go home. You do. Out of here. This could be valuable wall space for advertising. Schemer, this already is valuable wall space. Besides being a really wonderful mural, it tells the story of American history. History? History is in the past. Who needs it? Who... Hey. Who cleaned up there? I did. I, I did. Yeah? So how come there's no ladders out here? I'm telling you. I really think that this place is haunted. <laughs> <laughs> just a little bit of cake. Ah! Fuck it. It's just fucking. <laughs> Cleaning up isn't kid stuff. Oh, yes. Charming fellow, that schemer. He said what we're doing isn't important. Nonsense. In this station, there are big things to do and little things to do. But they're all important because they all help to get the job done. Sir Topham Hatt is having a similar problem on the island of Sodor. He's having a dreadful time with the big tender engines. Well, you'll see. Henry and Gordon were lonely when Thomas left the yard to run his branch line. They missed him very much. 
they had more work to do and had to fetch their own coaches. The big engines thought they were too important to fetch coaches. James grumbled too. We get no rest, we get no rest, they all complained. But the coaches only laughed. You're lazy and slack, you're lazy and slack, they answered. Altogether, the engines were causing Sir Topham Hatt a great deal of trouble. The big stations at both ends of the line each have a turntable. Sir Topham Hatt had made them so that the tender engines can be turned around because it is dangerous for them to go fast backwards. Little tank engines like Thomas don't need turntables. They can go just as well backwards as forwards. But to hear Gordon talk, you would have thought that Sir Topham Hatt had given him a tender just to show how important he was. You don't understand, little Thomas. We tender engines have a position to keep up. It doesn't matter where you go, but we are important. And for Sir Topham Hatt to make us do shunting, fetch coaches, and go on some of those dirty sidings, it's... It's, well, it's not the proper thing. Thomas chuckled and went off with Annie and Clarabel. Disgraceful, Gordon hissed as he ran backwards to the turntable. The turntable was in a windy place close to the sea, and if he was not on it just right, he put it out of balance and made it difficult to turn. Today, Gordon was in a bad temper, and the wind was blowing fiercely. His driver tried to make him stop in the right place, but Gordon wasn't trying. The fireman tried to turn the handle, but Gordon's weight and the strong wind prevented him. It's no good, they said at last. Your big tender upsets the balance. If you were a little tank engine, you'd be all right. Now you'll have to pull the next train backwards. Look, call some boys. There's a new tank engine. Oh, it's only Gordon back to front. Hello, call Thomas. Playing tank engines? Sensible engine. Take my advice. Scrap your tender and have a nice bunker. Gordon said nothing. Even James laughed when he saw him. Take care, his Gordon. You might stick too. No fear, chuckled James. I'm not so fat as you. I mustn't stick, thought James. He stopped on just the right place to balance the table. It could now swing easily. Gordon arrived in time to see everything. James turned much too easily. The wind popped him round like a top. He couldn't stop. Well, said Gordon, are you playing roundabouts? Poor James, feeling quite giddy, rolled off to the shed without a word. That night, the three engines had an indignation meeting. It's shameful to treat tender engines like this. Gordon has to go backwards and people think he's a tank engine. James spins round like a top and everyone laughs at us. And to add to that, a top of hat makes us all shunt in dirty sidings. Blech. Listen, said Gordon. He whispered something to the others. <laughs> we'll do it tomorrow, said Topham Hat will look silly. The engines have decided to go on strike. Go and strike. It means they wouldn't work because they wanted to make a point. I wish the schemer would go on strike. Not much chance of that, I'm afraid. Some people walk in their sleep. Schemer probably runs. <laughs> oh, and so must I, traveling man that I am. Wait! Wait, wait, what? Wait, who? Who are you talking to? This, Matt, my boy, is the future. 
With the proven techniques of modern advertising, I'm going to drag this place into the 20th century. Voila! Money is meant to be spent? Gee, that's nice. Uh, it's the dumbest thing I ever saw in my whole entire life. That's good. I like the way you're able to express yourself so freely. Yeah, I like that. I like that a bunch. What are you doing, Schemer? Matt, this is advertising. Say, how would you like to help? No. Right, right. Why should a guy help another guy make a buck when there's nothing in it for him? So, here, my friend, is the deal. You wear these posters outside on the platform, okay? And every once in a while, yell, hey, check it out, check it out. And for that, I'll give you a penny. Uh, I'll give you two pennies, one for each side. No, forget it. Okay, okay, he's tough. I like that. Ouch, ouch, ooh, I give up, I give up. <laughs> okay, I'll give you a nickel. No, these posters are awful. They only say things, they don't... Don't have pictures. Yeah, who needs you anyway? Hey, why should I give you a nickel when I can give myself a nickel? Tell you what, I am going to need some music to put up these posters by. Uh, what would be good music for poster putting up? Pop Goes the Weasel. What's that got to do with posters? Uh, oh, nothing. I just happen to like Pop Goes the Weasel. Is that okay with everybody? All right, Pop Goes the Weasel it is. Uh, well, listen to the music and have a few laughs on me. Anybody got a nickel? <laughs> I'm only kidding. It's my treat. My treat. Hey. You're wrong, baby. There are nine. Uh-uh. There are eight. I am positive. What's this all about, Rex? Oh, well, they're talking about how many planets are in the solar system, Tex. Well, thank you, Rex. Oh, you're welcome, Tex. Look, count them. There are nine. Mercury. Venus. Earth! Mars! Earth? Yeah, of course, Earth! What do you think? I don't know. I mean, I I, I guess I never thought of Earth as being a, a planet before. You know, I, I kind of always thought of it as being like, well, like home. Oh. Are you guys ready to play Pop Goes a Weasel or what? my name mentioned? Scheme is gonna cover up the clock. In your house, too. Without asking my permission, we'll see about that. Come on in, Ed. Meet the gang. That's Matt. That's Tanya. Nice kids. They don't know anything about business, but, uh, hey, nobody's perfect. So, this is the place, eh, Schemer? Yeah, pretty depressing, huh? <laughs> you should have seen it before I put the posters up. Ooh. Anyway, right up there is where I need you to slap something up there. Think you can do it? Sure, no problem. Hey! Hey, 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 watch it, watch it, watch it, watch it, huh? Schemer, very funny. You dragged me in here just for one of your gags. Hey, hey I'm innocent, I'm innocent. All right, who did it? A little man who lives in the station house. Here, Ed. Thanks. 
Say, what is this? It's a ticket book. Kind of nice. All this stuff. Yeah, it's all gorgeous. It's all beautiful. Hey, tell me, which one do you like better? This poster or that one? This whole wall, it's one big painting. It's called a mural. It's kind of nice. Schemer, you mind if I have a look? Ed, I want you to put them up, not take them down. Sorry it took so long. There were all these Boy Scouts on the train on their way to Pelican Falls. And they asked me a million questions about the station. They loved the look of it. Schemer! Yes? Take those posters down. And Stacy, oh, this is Ed. Oh, my goodness. Well, that's a very short name for such a tall person. I'm Stacy Jones, station master. This place is very interesting. What goes on here? Trains come and go. Where do they go? You name it. Doodle Haven? <laughs> Coming right up. Boy, it'll have to be a tall train. Not really. Ta-da! Round trip. Come on, I'll show you the platform. This is just terrific. Now I gotta find some other guy on stilt for East of High places. Has he gone? Look to Sam Stacy. He didn't want to get wet again, Mr. Conductor. And I didn't mean to give him a shower, Tanya. But I didn't want him to paper over my house either. But couldn't you use your magic and smash through the posters? I can't make muscles by magic, Tanya. I'd have been trapped in there. And you would never have heard of what happened when the engines went on strike. Have they gone back to work yet? Well, not exactly. Sir Topham Hatt sat in his office listening to the noise outside. The passengers were angry. The station master came in. There's trouble in the shed, sir. Henry is sulking, there's no train, and the passengers are saying this is a bad railway. Indeed, said Sir Topham Hatt. We cannot allow that. He found Gordon, James, and Henry looking very cross. Come along, Henry, it's time your train was ready. Henry's not going, said Gordon. We won't shunt like little tank engines. That was Thomas's job. We are important tender engines. You fetch our coaches and we will pull them. Tender engines don't shunt. We'll see about that, said Sir Topham Hatt. No engine on my railway is too important for small jobs. And he hurried away to find Edward. The yard has never been the same since Thomas left to run his branch line, he thought sadly. Edward was shunting. Leave those freight cars, please, Edward, said Sir Topham Hatt. I want you to push coaches for me in the yard. Thank you, sir. That will be a nice change. That's a good engine. Off you go, then. So Edward found coaches for the three engines, and that day the trains ran as usual. Next morning, Edward looked unhappy. Gordon came clanking past, hissing rudely. Bless me, said Sir Topham Hatt. What a noise! They all hiss me, sir, answered Edward. They say tender engines don't shunt, and last night they said I have grey wheels. I haven't, have I, sir? No, Edward, you have nice blue ones, and I'm proud of you. Tender engines do shunt. But all the same, we do need another tank engine here. He went to a workshop and they showed him all sorts of engines. At last he saw a smart little green engine with four wheels. That's the one, he thought. If I choose you, will you work hard? Oh, sir, yes, sir. That's a good engine. I'll call you Percy. Yes, sir. Thank you, sir, said Percy. And Sir Topham Hatt brought him back to the yard. Edward, he called. Here's Percy. Will you show him everything? Percy soon learned what he had to do, and they had a happy afternoon. Then Henry came by, hissing as usual. Shee! 
when Percy Henry jumped and ran back to the shed. How beautifully you weased him, laughed Edward. I can't weesh like that. Oh, said Percy, that's nothing. You should hear them in the workshop. You have to weesh loudly to make yourself heard. Next morning, Thomas arrived. Sir Topham Hatt sent for me. I expect he wants help, he said to Edward. Shh, shh, here he comes, replied Edward. Well done, Thomas. You've been quick. Listen, Henry Gordon and James are sulking. They say they won't shunt like little tank engines. So I have shut them up and I want you both to run the line for a while. Little tank engines indeed, snorted Thomas. We'll show them. And Percy will help too. Oh, sir, yes, sir, please, sir, answered Percy. Edward and Thomas worked the main line, greeting each other as they passed by. Percy puffed along the branch line. Thomas was anxious about Annie and Claribel, but both driver and conductor promised to take care of them. There were fewer trains, but the passengers didn't mind. They knew the three other engines were having a lesson. Gordon, James and Henry were cold, lonely and miserable. They wished now they hadn't been so silly. Gordon, James and Henry think shunting is just a little job. But how else can people get on the train? Precisely. It's the little things like cleaning that make the big things possible. For example, my bicycle needs exercising. If I don't ride it every day, it's handlebars group. Bye-bye. Good afternoon. Grandpa? Uh-huh. You know those sticks you walk around on? You mean stilts? What about them? Could you make us some? No. Well, of course, I could show you a close approximation. Kind of like elevator shoes. Do they go up and down? Not quite, but you do. Actually, you can't do this by yourselves. You gotta have an adult help you. But it's easy. Now, all you need is a can and a string. Right. Now, you put a hole inside the can, right there. Now, you gotta make the hole kind of large here. Okay? Right. On the other side. There we go. Then. String through here. Right then. All right. Right. And then. Here we come right through here. Uh, she's coming. Right there. Okay. Now. There are different ways to do this. You can tie them close to your shoes. Well, you can have one and hold it tall, like that. Yeah, now, but be careful you don't scrape the wooden floors. Thanks, Grandpa. <laughs> hey, Harry, can you possibly... I think I possibly can. <laughs> All right, Matt. Hey, we have to finish cleaning up. We're a team here. Look! Oh. oh, all right. But afterwards, it's back to work. Now you watch, I'll turn. Now let's all work together. Come on, all work together. He will all work together to get the whole job done. We're all birds of a feather. If we all work together, then the whole job gets easier and we'll have lots of fun. Come on over here. Hey, let's go. Keep it busy. Come on. Let's all work that machinery all out. Red, blue, and green. Ray. He will work that machinery till we've done what we must do. Gotta wake up the scenery. Let's all work that machinery. We'll machine that machinery and the job will soon be through.
weather. Yeah, we'll all work together to keep our spirits high. And we won't question whether we can all work together. Cause we'll build something wonderful in everybody's eyes. The people see my posters? Okay, okay, okay. The posters were no good. Do you know why? I can't draw. That's why. I mean, ask anybody who knows me. Do you know what they say about me? A great guy. A genius at business. I deeply respect the man. But he's no artist. That's what people say about me. And they're right. But the idea for the posters was terrific. Why? I'm an idea man. So, how's about it? How's about what? How's about you draw the posters, I put them up. Forget it, Schemer. Tanya! Here's the deal. You take that, all the other posters, and we'll give you this one. One poster? Hey, can you spare it? <laughs> hey! It's a poster of an elephant. What does an elephant have to do with jukeboxes? Take it from me. Okay, I'll tell you what. I'll take it as long as you write on this. Uh, elephants are big. Elephants are gray. Spend money. It's a deal. Okay, excellent. Excellent. <laughs> Reach for the speed, reach for the whistle, go where the rail may run. Reach for the words, reach for the story, follow the rainbow sun. To a shining time station, where dreams can come true, waiting there for you. So much to see. So far to travel, so much to learn to know Friends by your side, hopes to hold on to Who knows how far you'll go To a shining time station Where dreams can come true Your own